Welcome back to FM Live. My name is Mike Usri, and today we are going to be talking about stainless steel braided brake lines and clutch lines for that matter. And why do you need them? What do they do? All kinds of stuff. We're going to show you some shiny stuff and some dirty stuff. Uh, not that kind of dirty. Keep your mind out of the gutter. So uh, stainless steel clutch or braided brake lines, um, oftentimes called, very simply, um, they are just that. They are hoses or lines made for transferring fluid from one end to the other, and they are braided. So what you can't see is that they actually have a Teflon tube on the inside of these guys. Yeah, I'll let you focus on that rather than trying to chase my fingers around. And on the outside of that Teflon tube, they have a stainless steel weave or braid that goes over the top of that whole Teflon tube to one, protect it, but also to encapsulate it. And then over the top of it, if you've got a high quality one, which you should, and all of ours are, there's also a coating, usually like a polyurethane or some kind of a urethane coating on the outside. So that way this doesn't abrade against other things or tear up your hands as you're installing it. Some of the cheaper lines that are out there for these kinds of intentions or these purposes don't have a cover. It's a good idea. They One, it makes them last longer, um, but also two, it just protects a lot of the other stuff around them. So it's a hose. It's a fancy hose in short. Now, why might you want a stainless steel braided hose for a clutch or a brake line application? Now, the big difference that we should probably start off with, so that way you can see why we're talking about these fancy shiny hoses, is that for most brake lines and clutch lines, this one's a little bit covered, so let's just take a look at this one. They are rubber, and you can see they're DOT labeled and all that kind of fun stuff. But essentially, it is a very plain, flexible rubber hose. And it just has crimped on fittings on the end, so that way you can thread in your adapters, whether it's banjos or some kind of an NPT style adapter or flare adapter, but it's just rubber. And it does a great job. OEMs everywhere use rubber hoses because it's efficient, it does its job, and generally speaking, it does last a long time. The downside to rubber hoses is that it is rubber. It will degrade over time. You know, it may be 10, 20, 30 years by the time that it actually is completely worn out, but it does degrade, and so it will need to be replaced. Um, the other thing is that, especially as it gets older, the rubber hose can act kind of like a balloon. So as you press your brake or clutch lever, hey, hooray for props. As you press that lever, you've got a master that actually here, I've got one on the table. It pushes fluid up, down, and to whatever component it is, whether it's your slave cylinder or brake calipers, which is at the other end of your hydraulic system, to move fluid so that way it can do work. It can push this cylinder out or it can compress your brake pads against a brake rotor to do work. But over time, that rubber, as it starts to break down and degrade, it can also not only let the fluid transfer through it as it should, but it also will expand a little bit. That pressure wants to force its way outwards as well as go down the rest of the pipe to get to where it's supposed to be going. And what that will do is one, requires more volume to do the same amount of work, but also two, it gives a very spongy pedal feel. So if you're pressing on the brake or the clutch pedal, that as you're pressing on it, you may need to apply more effort at the pedal for it to do the same amount of work as you would expect if that spongy expanding ballooning action wasn't happening. Now, if you've got a brand new car, you probably won't notice this as much, but the older cars, especially when this hose starts to get older and starts to break down and degrade, you'll notice that, well, it may take a while, but if you jump from a new car from an old car, you probably would notice it then that the difference is gonna be a spongier feeling pedal because of that brake hose is expanding rather than forcing the fluid to go down to whatever slave cylinder or brake caliper is supposed to be doing work. So to avoid that, and also to also, uh, get around the issue of having brake lines that will crack, because what rubber does when it degrades is it'll crack, and then you'll have a failure. 
If you upgrade with stainless steel lines like this that have the Teflon tube on the inside, then a layer of braid, and then usually the urethane coating on the outside, these have a much, much longer life expectancy. Um, in most cases, unless there's a problem where you're in an accident or accidentally uh, cut these or you know something along those lines, this will probably outlive the rest of the car. These are very, very stout, and um, most of the time they'll transfer ownership. You'll see these trading hands on the used market actually quite a bit, which is surprising, or one might think. So um, they're better for longevity's sake, and because they have that stainless steel weave on them, they are keeping the tube on the inside much more uh, tautly compressed. So it really helps to avoid that ballooning that you can get a little bit of with your rubber brake lines. Now, what does this feel like at the driver's seat? When I was talking earlier about the sponginess of the pedal, this helps to make that go away. So no longer, if you banish your rubber lines, will you have that ballooning effect. And so when you press the brake pedal, all of the motion that you're putting into to move that fluid makes that fluid go down to the end where it's gonna be doing work to move things. So you're not wasting any effort of that pedal stroke to make your lines expand. Instead, you're making all of that effort go down and actually do the work that you want it to do. It's being more useful. In a nutshell, that's what a stainless steel brake line or clutch hose does. Now, um, let's talk about a little bit more application-specific things. Um, let's go over the, the clutch line stuff first. So, as far as we have, we do sell a stainless steel clutch line. This is for the NA and NB generations. They've used the same style clutch hose. And in front of me, this is actually a stock complete clutch hydraulic system. So we have the master cylinder over here, the slave cylinder at this far end, and then lots of convoluted piping, hoses, and fittings in between. So one thing that other people have asked us, um, and this is one of the better questions, so thank you very much for prompting us with this, is why might you do a stainless steel line anywhere in the system and where might it be appropriate to use something else other than a stainless steel braided hose? And the short answer for that is that these parts, the, the hard lines or the, uh, the formed hoses that are made of steel or copper tubing sometimes if it's aftermarket stuff, these lines don't balloon, they don't flex. So really, unless you're building something custom or you're replacing stuff like if you live, unfortunately, in the rust belt and uh, everything metal has a very short lifespan or shorter than most other places, you might need to replace this. And if you wanted to replace it with something other than another factory piece, maybe you'd want to do a stainless steel clutch hose for that or brake line or whatever it is. But primarily speaking, this stuff, as long as it's in good shape, is pretty good to hang on to. One, um, because you don't have to worry about routing it already has all the right bends and all the right fittings on the firewall and otherwise for where Mazda intended it to be. So you don't have to do any extra work making it fit to your car if this is a more or less stock application. Uh, two, because these are actually steel or copper tubings, again, depending on stock or aftermarket stuff, they don't balloon or flex at all. Um, one could theoretically say that this technically would flex or balloon just a hair bit more than an actual hard line. It's a really negligible kind of thing, so I wouldn't really put too much worry behind either one. But the short answer for most people is that they already have this, it's fine. You don't need to replace it unless you're doing something really custom. So that leaves us with the rest of this kind of goofy mess. So we have a fitting here that's normally bolted to the firewall. We've got our section of flexible rubber hose and then we have this curly cue or uh, pigtail as they're sometimes called that leads into the slave cylinder. This is a lot of extra stuff that's shoved down behind the engine in between the chassis and the bell housing of the transmission. And for one, um, it's goofy. It's a little bit too complicated for most people as far as what they need in there. But also too, it makes space a little bit tighter um, to access if you want to be able to get to bell housing bolts and stuff like that. So. A simpler way to do all of this 
is to replace from this fitting on the firewall down to the slave cylinder with one simple length of stainless steel braided line. So that's exactly what this does. You take out the fitting there, this end screws into the slave, and then this has the female fitting on this side that replaces all of this. So you get rid of your clutch hose and this little curly Q pigtail thing. Uh, one of the things that I also find that this is helpful to do is that bleeding your clutch kind of sucks. It's not terrible, terrible, but it takes a long time. You're not moving a whole bunch of fluid because your master is pretty small. So to make it as easy on yourself as possible and to promote all of the bubbles to go all the way downhill too, because you're fighting gravity, rather than having issues with the bubbles getting stuck at the top of the loop while you're trying to bleed it, if you get rid of that loop altogether because you just have one straight shot, it does help make the bleeding process easier if you have an NA or NB clutch system. So if you are replacing your master or your slave cylinder and or you've got an issue with your rubber brake or I'm sorry rubber clutch hose this can make your life quite a bit easier uh, not to mention it's shiny go fast race car parts right so easy choice. Let's transition over to brake parts now because this will apply to more people since we don't have the other parts for all of the generations but we do have stainless steel brake lines for all four generations of Miata. So these ones on the table, again, they are NA and B, but even the NC and the ND cables will look pretty similar. This is specific to NAs and NBs with this little distribution block, so NC and ND owners just ignore that part. Basically, you have the banjo fitting end that will attach to your caliper, just like this one does. And then on the other end, you'll have female fittings that'll screw into the adapters on the chassis for the rest of the hard lines or hard um, tubing that you have running underneath the car. Very same process and application. They are literally the same construction as far as they are Teflon tubes. They have a stainless steel braid over the top of them and a urethane coating so that way they are nice and solid as far as not letting that fluid balloon or basically make work that isn't meaningful happen. And they are flexible so they will replace the line that goes from the point on your chassis where your rubber hose would connect all the way to the brake line. So that way you can get rid of this rubber and not have to worry about any of that. Um, the other thing for these guys that I should say is also a nice thing is that generally speaking on a lot of your fittings, this one in particular is kind of a crusty one, is that the fittings on your stock parts are uh, kind of a, a softer metal. They aren't usually in very nice shape, especially if you have an older car. And they're easy to round off because oftentimes being underneath the car, um, they see lots of corrosion. And especially if you live in the rust belt, you might have a lot of rust on these parts specifically. So getting rid of these guys, as long as you can get them off and replace them with these fittings that are, um, I believe they're some kind of a zinc coating or a uh, cadmium or something along those lines. They do resist rust quite a bit better. They also have these spinning fittings, whereas these ones do not. So they're more, uh, they're easier to get aligned properly on the chassis before you tighten things down. Let's go through some of the questions that we got over the last few days talking about these stainless steel clutch and braided hoses, uh, clutch and brake hoses rather. Uh, one of the questions that we got was, do they reduce the amount of moisture and condensation that gets in the hydraulic system for either one? And I guess you could say technically they do. As time goes on that the rubber does degrade and break down, it is technically porous. So yeah, you are absorbing small amounts, but little bitty amounts of moisture do get in through your hoses. So getting rid of your rubber hoses with something that has literally three layers of relatively impregnable, as far as water is concerned, um, liners or uh, layers, does reduce the amount of um, hyd I was gonna say hydrogen. <laughs> uh, does reduce the amount of water that gets into your hydraulic systems. So um, another relatively minimal thing, but technically speaking, yes. How often do you need to replace or check your stainless steel brake lines or clutch lines? So these guys are very stout. As I mentioned earlier, 
they don't really wear out, or at least not in anybody's, most people's lifetimes. Usually what we see if people need to replace these is because they didn't route them properly, and now they're up against something that's rubbing, and it'll rub a hole through the urethane and into the stainless steel braiding, or if it's bad enough, like a, a brake line actually, we've seen this happen, where they don't route it properly, and as the wheel is turning, and if it's a front wheel, it's, it's also rotating this way, that it'll contact the brake line and it rub through it to the point where it's actually opening up the hydraulic system. So that is generally the failure mode. Otherwise, as long as you route them properly and you take good care of them, keep them clean, all that kind of stuff, they'll probably outlive your car, possibly even you. One of the questions or uh, suggestions was, my front tire rubbed through the plastic coatings on these guys, or the urethane coatings on the lines. Is that bad? So, yeah, it's not great. Um, the urethane coating on the outside of the stainless steel braid is there mostly to make it smooth, and so that way it doesn't catch on things. Um, if you have a lesser quality brake line, sometimes it isn't actually stainless underneath, so if you have a cheap brake line or clutch hose, they may actually have a non-stainless that will rust and if that urethane is ripped off or rubbed off, you'll actually have rust underneath. So another not awesome thing. Um, will it fail eventually if it's a lower quality hose? Yes. Um, if you do have a good quality hose, then it'll not look so great, but it won't actually affect performance of the hose itself. That being said, if you see any um, indications of rubbing or wear or that urethane getting pulled off, you should absolutely do what you can to get it out of the way to prevent that from happening any further to avoid any hydraulic fluid getting um, out of the system because obviously that's bad. Um, installation tips or things to watch out for. The clutch hose, that one's pretty straightforward. You know, things aren't moving really where the clutch hose is. Make sure that your routing is such that uh, you're not getting in the way of maybe the uh, belt housing bolts on the transmission, but otherwise pretty straightforward. With the brake lines, again, Make sure that you are keeping them clear of the wheels because not only for all four wheels do you have to worry about your suspension going up and down, so your brake hoses will be moving to accommodate the wheels going up and down, but on the front wheels, you'll also have to accommodate for the wheels turning. So make sure that you think about this as you're installing them and, and try to plan for how those hoses are gonna move so that way you don't have an issue where your hoses are rubbing up against either the control arms or the wheels and tires or anything else that might cause damage. Generally speaking, another good practice on these guys, because they do have these fittings that are able to be moved separately from the rest of the line, is get your banjos attached to the calipers. And then as you're getting your hose routed over to the hard line fitting, let's we'll use this as an example, you'll have these kind of uh, flare fittings here. And you would get it lined up so that way you could start threading it in. This is hard to do with only one hand. There we go. As you start to get it threaded up but not actually tightened, you can see I can move everything all at once. One of the things you can do to help if you've got clearance issues is you can actually pre-twist the hose a little bit so that way it naturally wants to bend away and then you can tighten down your fitting. So that way if your wheel might come this way on the front when you're turning it one way or the other, if your hose is bent this way naturally, you're going to have issues with it rubbing. But if you kind of twist it and give it a little bit of preload, you can have that hose naturally bend away from the wheel or tire or control arm to keep it out of harm's way. Um, one of the other questions that is another common one that we get asked quite a bit is, do I need these for a street car or are these just track car parts? You know, do I need to worry about this if I'm not going to the racetrack? Not necessarily. You could conceivably call these a maintenance item as well as a performance upgrade. So if I needed to replace a, a rubber hose because it was failing or cracked and I was concerned, you might as well go with a stainless steel line anyway. You know, there's really not a downside compared to the rubber other than potentially maybe that they're slightly more expensive. However, the upgrades, as far as performance are concerned, still apply on the street. That clutch pedal avoiding the sponginess or getting rid of the sponginess is still something that I very much enjoy and value for a street car because 
I'm sure most of us have probably driven some old jalopy that really had old brakes, old clutch, you know, whatever. And the pedal feeling was just vague that it did stop or, you know, the clutch did disengage eventually, but you couldn't feel when it actually happened. So if you like to know and have that value of, I can feel what things are doing as I'm pressing the pedal. It's not just a vague, 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 vague. Okay. Yep. There it is having the stainless steel clutch hose or brake lines does help to make that easier to tell the difference of when your hydraulic systems are doing what they're supposed to. So not just for race cars anymore. I think we burned through all of the questions we had before. Do we have anything that's come through since then that I haven't already covered? So I think just to make sure I understand the question is, are there any brake lines that would not be compatible with a certain pad or rotor? I don't think that there would be any instance that that would make a difference because all that this is doing is allowing the fluid to transfer from one end to the other. So assuming that your system, your, uh, your brakes work with hydraulic pressure, uh, it shouldn't matter what rotors or pads that you're using. Um, that's more of an application of are your pads or rotors set up um, or have material on them that are more biased towards street use or track use or something in between but the stainless steel braided lines won't make a difference as far as what your choice for pads um, or rotors necessarily is. I guess one could argue that that might change your balance uh, for your brake bias a little bit, but if you're doing it in all four corners, it should be relatively even front to rear bias. If I didn't answer your questions, then we will get to them after the video has been posted, both on Facebook and YouTube. So thank you again for participating. We sure appreciate it. It does help to make sure that we're trying to get as many of these questions answered as possible. So uh, with all of that said, I hope that you learned something. Hopefully this is good information to help you decide whether or not stainless steel brake hoses or clutch hoses are for you. And if there's anything else that you'd like us to cover in the future, let us know. We love doing these kinds of things that, uh, you know, maybe for some people, they seem like they're pretty straightforward or common knowledge, but for a lot of people, they may not know. So we'd like to cover this stuff just to make sure everybody's on the same page. Um, hopefully give a little bit of entertainment value if, if nothing else. But if you have suggestions on other topics that we can cover, drop those down in the comments below as well. And hopefully we'll get to them sometime in the future. Otherwise, until next time, again, my name is Mike Esri. Thanks for joining us. And we will see you same time, same place. Have a good week.